Good morning, it is Jane. Um, I don't have any finished objects. I've been working on a couple of things. And of course, one of those is the continue to work on that uh, sugar blush shawl, which I'm not getting very far. Um, a lot of it is my hand gets tired, and so I put it off. So, you know. I did start another project, which I will put, kind of show you it, and um, first of all, I'm, I'm going to show you the picture of it in the book. It is a reversible afghan, and it comes, it's called the Painted Honeycomb Afghan. Hope you can see that without the glare. And it comes from the Reversible Afghan Book by Annie. And that is there, it on the back. Now, um, you know, sometimes you wonder how people <laughs> write the pattern. There is um, one spot where you're you're kind of working in the front and back loops, but on one of the rows it says, working behind the last row, in front loops of last single cro row, single crochet row, pick up the turquoise, chain three, double crochet in each stitch across. <laughs> but you can't work behind it when you're using the front loops. So, it's rather confusing. It can be rather confusing. Anyway, this is what I have so far on it. And that is the reversible side. It is just stripes. And this is not in a It's not interlocking, it's mo not mosaic. You're just basically working with two yarns across. Now I am using Stitch Studio in Gentle White as my base color. And then I am using Soft Teal, which is that Stitch Studio. And then I also have, because I'm gonna switch it out with Light Teal, so that when I finish one skein of the soft teal, then I'll work with the light teal in that cream, and then I'll go back, because I have four skeins of the teal, two in the soft, I mean two in the soft teal and two in the light teal. So I do plan on working with that together in that. Now, I am going to show you something that I have been working on. You know, I wanted to learn interlocking crochet. So I decided that I would try this free pattern. And I believe the free pattern comes from I'll hook you up blogspot.com, a beginner's guide to interlocking crochet. Now, it is supposed to have that lovely zigzag appearance. Well, I did get the zig, but then I lost the zag somewhere in there. So I'm, I may have to call Jenny Rupert and ask her to give me a couple of lessons because this is not making sense to me. The videos online, there's one by Tannis Gannick that she I mean, it's, it's a good video, except it's an older video, it's blurry, it's dark. Um, you can't really see where she's putting the hook when she says you go behind the stitch and then go in front and then behind. You can't see exactly where she's going with that, and that's probably my problem. So, I will be ripping this back out till I get to the zag, 
However, I did notice that I do have horses here going this way and some going that way. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm goofy. <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things that you just kind of look at and you go, hmm, learning curve. Boy, do I have a learning curve. So, uh, yeah, I've been playing with that because that is one of my goals this year to learn interlocking crochet. Supposedly, it's, that not, it's not that hard. I guess a lot of it is just getting where to place the hook when you are doing the next stitch. So, um, yeah, that is the big learning curve there. I had to laugh. Got the zig. Lost the zag. So, uh, yeah, I've been, like I said, been playing with that a little bit and learning it. And, of course, now we're in a new year. So what better time to learn to play than in a new year? Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I did want to tell you that... Um, I will be filming, Tuesdays will be Tunisian Tuesday, Monday will be the regular podcast, I'm moving that up a day. I do plan on continuing with a little bit waist lo weight, weight loss tips, some things like that, um, and they may include some recipes in there, you know, kind of kitchen things, that, that kind of stuff. Um, I just thought that might be interesting to play with throughout the year. I am also going to be working on a few other couple, a couple of other things, but those will be coming up probably later on this month, not so much the first week, first couple of weeks. So yeah, I am working on that. I'm enjoying it and uh, looking forward to this whole new year. So I hope everybody had a great holiday. I hope you didn't drink too much, and if you did, I hear there's two uh, thoughts on that, that you should have some more hair of the dog, drink whatever you drank. The other thing that I understand is a greasy meal will fix it. I don't know if either one is true. Probably not. But hey, and I'm not a drinker, so... You know, I was always the designated driver when we were driving because even as a teen when I, we were going to the parties, I was the designated driver. I refused to get drunk. I didn't want to see my friends get injured. Why? Because I had a friend who died in an alcohol-induced state while they were driving. So, and that was when I was a teenager. So I decided long ago that uh, alcohol really wasn't for me. I didn't really enjoy it. The few times I got drunk, I can count on one hand, three times. Only one of those times was I totally wasted off my rear end. And that was as a teenager, um, which was I only got drunk twice. But as an adult, I got drunk one time. And I can tell you, um, I do remember doing a lot of dancing that night, a lot of drinking. I almost got in f into a fight with some guy. Pete came over and asked if he was bothering me. And I said, no, not really. I'm about to knock the chip off his shoulder. He said, nope. He let me do that with the baseball bat. He looks at me and he goes, you're drunk. You're the designated driver. Why are you drinking? I said, because I feel like drinking tonight. So, so, you know, that kind of thing. But I can remember my girlfriends taking me home. I was laying in the back seat. I got sick. I opened up the back doors. We're going down the highway, 60 miles an hour, tossing cookies. I do remember that. I remember them screaming at me. I said, well, do you want me to throw up in the car? Hey, I knew I wasn't going to throw up in the car, but, you know, when you're drunk, you do stupid stuff. So, I don't drink. All right. So, that is my tale of woe for this year. Um, I will tell you, one of the things that I am planning on doing is 
calling something sort of, I think, what whip and coffee, which what whip actually stands for, work on the whip. So it'll probably be a little bit of time where we just sit. I bring out a whip, you bring out one of your whips, and we work on them together and just chit chat while we're going. I don't know if that'll be alive or if I will choose to do that as video with me yapping and telling you stories. Who knows? We'll get to it when we get to it. I will tell you, I have noticed lately that I've been having issues with this camera. I do not know what is going on because when I'm filming and looking at it, you look clear, I look as clear as day. Yet when the playback comes back, it's fuzzy. So I don't know what's going on. When I'm looking at the playback on my screen, when I am doing the rendering of the videos, everything looks fine. When I upload it to YouTube, fuzzy is all good. So maybe it's something that YouTube is doing, I don't know. So if it's fuzzy, I apologize for that. Um, I don't know what's going on. I am having someone check over my camera later this month who's a camera person to make sure it's not an issue with my camera. All right, guys. You ready for a little what in tarnation? Here we go. Wallet lost at Atlanta movie theater found 65 years later. Workers remodeling an Atlanta movie theater found something surprising behind a wall. A wallet that had been lost by a patron 65 years earlier. A contractor found the old wallet behind a wall at the Plaza Theater, turned it over to the cinema's owner, Chris Escobar. Escobar said the area where the wallet was found was likely a former lost and found area in a manager's office that had long since been hidden by renovations. It was a portal back into time, he told CNN. Then realizing that this has been missing from the family of real people who lived in this neighborhood for 65 years. Imagine if we could find them. Escobar did some research online and discovered the wallet's owner, Floyd Colbreth, died at age 87 in 2005. But he was able to contact her daughter, Thea Colbreth Chamberlain, 71. I don't even know how to say how flabbergasted I was, Chamberlain told. The Washington Post of the first time she held her mother's long-lost wallet, and it took a while for it to sink in. Chamberlain was only six years old when her mother lost a wallet in 1958. Its contents included old family photos, a library card, and raffle tickets. She said looking through the wallet brought memories of her mother flooding back. She was in there. I know it sounds kind of hokey, but she really was. <coughs> so that's a nice story. Then we have Kansas State football team devours Pop-Tarts mascot after a bowl win. Kansas State football players partook in a unique feast to celebrate their postseason victory over North Carolina State, devouring a giant Pop-Tarts mascot on the field at Camping World Stadium. Celebration occurred after the Wildcats be beat the Wolf Pack. Sorry about that, North Carolina. 28 to 19 in the Pop-Tarts Bowl on Thursday in Orlando, Florida. Fans and players stared at a giant toaster just at above midfield logo in the minutes after the final whistle. Person wearing a Pop-Tarts costume eventually ascended up the toaster slot, prompting smart sparks and smoke. The Pop-Tarts mascot then dropped back down in the slot. Seconds later, an edible version of the mascot slid out of the front of the toaster. Wildcats coach Chris Kleiman and his players then scooped up handfuls of the frosted treat as part of, part of their unique postgame meal. Wildcats quarterback Avery Johnson threw two touchdown passes, ran for another score in the victory, 
Running back DJ Giddens logged 188 yards from scrimmage and two scores on 29 touches for the Wildcats. Wild receiver Jace Brown also scored in the victory. College football's bowl season will continue with four games Friday. Kentucky will face Clemson in the Gator Bowl at noon on Jacksonville, Florida, which has already happened in the first game of Friday's slate. The two college football playoff semifinal matchups will take place Monday with number one Michigan will battle number four Alabama in the Rose Bowl game at 5 p.m. in Pasadena, California. That is tonight. Texas will take on number two Washington in the Sugar Bowl at 8.45 p.m. in New Orleans. Hope you enjoy the games, guys. <sighs> Debris, when you are on the highway, can be very dangerous. So you have to always be alert while you're driving. Airborne debris impales windshield of a CHP patrol car. The California Highway Patrol said an officer was not injured when a piece of debris impaled their windshield on the highway. Uh, <coughs> Chip Bakersfield said in a Facebook post, the officer was driving the patrol car when the truck in front, in front of them ran over a piece of, piece of debris, a leaf spring, and sent it flying through the air. The debris impaled the windshield, 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 windshield of the patrol vehicle, but the officer was not injured. You never know when you may have to take evasive action to avoid an object in the roadway. Please report debris in the roadway by calling 911. And that is true everywhere you go. I didn't know this many varieties of cheese existed. Pizza topped with 1,001 varieties of cheese baked in France. A pair of French pizza chef, chefs, chefs teamed up with a cheese maker and a YouTube star to create a pizza featuring 1,001 different varieties types of cheese. Chefs Bonnet Brule and Fabian Monte, Montelanico worked with cheesemaker Sophie Hattat Richard Luna and YouTuber Florian On Air to break the Guinness World Record for the most varieties of cheese on a pizza. Burrell previously set the record at 254 cheeses in 2020, but his record was later broken by Morgan Niquette who cooked a pizza top with 834 varieties of cheese. The team's new pizza took the record for the largest displays of cheese varieties, which was previously set at 730 by fellow Frenchman Philippe Marchand in 2016. Burrell said 940 of the pungent pies cheeses came from France while the others were sourced from countries around the world. I've been a pizza maker for 13 years, he told Guinness World Records. I invented my own cheese pizza, my own pizza recipes. And since working in my own business, my only dream is to make pizzas with the widest varieties of cheeses. That's a lot of cheeses. I wonder if they list the cheeses. That would be interesting to know. Volunteer animal rescuer saves cat with head stuck in a jar. A volunteer animal rescuer in New Jersey was able to rescue a cat seen wandering for several days with a jar stuck over its head. John DeBacker, vice president of Long Island Cat Kitten Solution, was alerted to the plight of the feline in Irvington by fellow volunteer rescuers Marcia Sanford Fishkind and Elaine, Eileen De Nicola. DeBacker said he asked to be notified of any further sightings, and on Christmas Day his phone lit up with alerts that the gray tabby had been spotted. DeBacker posted a video to Facebook showing how he safely captured the cat and removed the jar from its head. And there's video. Police remove 
huge beaver from inside Tennessee Hospital. Workers at a Tennessee hospital ended up calling for help from the police when a huge beaver wandered into the facility and took shelter under a piano. The Bartlett Police Department said in a Facebook post that officers were called to St. Francis Hospital on Christmas Day when staff spotted a huge beaver wandering around inside. Officers arrived to find the beaver hiding under a piano in a hospital lounge. Police wrote the beaver was probably looking to nom nom a Christmas tree. The beaver was not injured and was returned to the wild. And there are pictures. Beavers are at it again, but this time in Arizona. Beavers invade Arizona neighborhoods. Residents in the Phoenix area have noticed an increase in sightings of some unusual guests in their neighborhoods. Beavers. Southwest Wildlife Conservation Center in Scottsdale said the most recent beaver sighting was reported in the Arcadia neighborhood of Phoenix and rescuers arrived to find the animal gnawing on a tree. It had almost gnawed through half of that tree by the time I got there, Kim Carr, animal care manager at the Conservation Center, told Arizona Republic. It was completely unfazed by the crowd that was forming around it. The rescue group said the beaver was the third to be spotted recently in Phoenix and Tempe. I don't know about you, but I've never seen a beaver in Arcadia. Jamie Haas, Oliver, a developmental manager at Southwest Wildlife Conservation, told KPNX TV, so it's a pretty unusual sight. I have boxes back there and they're jumping in the boxes. What cat doesn't love a box? So it's a pretty unusual sight. Only about 200 believe, be, believers, only about 200 beavers are believed to live in the wild in Arizona, and they typically stick to areas near major waterways, which is why they like to make dams because there's water. Carr said the beavers are probably taking wrong turns in their native river systems to end up in the valley. They must come in from the river system because you're not just going to find a bunch of beavers living in Phoenix and dipping into the canals and coming out, she said. Oliver expressed a similar theory. So there's a chance that the Salt River might be feeding into a canal system. Oliver said once a beaver makes it into the canal, like the one near 44th Street in Osborne, there's no food in there for them. So when they get hungry, they will emerge from the water and look for food. The Wildlife Center said the Arcadia beaver was examined by a veterinarian and found to be in good health, meaning it will soon be returned to the wild. However, they do have one that will not be returned to the wild and will be living there for the rest of its little beaver life. All right, that is it for today. Hang on. That portion's over. Well, that is it for that part of the um, podcast. However, I did go to Hobby Lobby, and I got a couple of things. So I have a very small haul, if I can get the cat out of the bag, because she sees yarn in there, and she wants to play with it. And one of the things that I got is I did get some essential oil aromatherapy. And this is called Tranquil. Um, I love the smell of this. Um, I do make my own floor cleaner um, since I do have the vinyl flooring in the house. And you really don't need a whole lot to wash it. Generally, um, when I make my own floor cleaner, I use... Uh, a cup of water to a cup of alcohol, a couple of drops of Dawn dish soap, and then a couple of drops of the essential oils, whatever flavor I choose. Tranquil is what I normally like because it calms me down, keeps me calm, and I just like the smell of it. Um, and then you just mix that all up in a spray bottle, and then you can spray it on the floor and mop. Um, you can do spot mopping if you need to, or just mop the entire floor with it. Generally, I have one of those um, 
Swiffer mop heads, but instead of using the pads that come with it, I just take a microfiber cloth that you get at Wal. I mean, if you get them over in the cleaning department of Walmart, you get two cloths, two cloths for a dollar twenty-eight. But you can get two cloths at you know a dollar and a quarter store now for a dollar and a quarter. Um, but um, generally, I just push those down into the indentations where you normally would put your cloth piece in there for the Swiffer. And then I use that to mop the floors and then I throw it into the washing machine to wash them. So I did get that. But there was something that I'd been trying to get several weeks in a row, but every time I went there, they were out. And it was this that's in the wood pile section. Um, and the reason that I was wanting it is I had gotten the letters that say blessed and I wanted to put it, paint them, put it across here and put a couple of verses down the side that I wanted to paint um, on there. But I couldn't get the cross. And I thought, well, you know, I could order it, but, you know, needless to say, I didn't order it. <coughs> and then... When I was going through there, um, you know that I'm always doing things for the um, Operation Christmas Child. So there were a couple things that I picked up while I was in there for that specifically. And one is um, the jewelry. They had these wooden beads on sale, and these are crosses. And then they had mini pony beads. And I grab these as well. And what I generally do is I'll take and put a couple of the mini beads into a small pill bottle, you know, a cross or two, and then some um, hemp or some kind of beading string so that they can make their own necklaces. And so I make little beading kits that way so that um, kids can make their own necklaces, bracelets, whatever they want. Sometimes I will throw in embroidery floss, different colors, um, and directions um, how to weave to make the friendship bracelets. Those are always a lot of fun for the kids, so yeah, um, I kind of do that occasionally. Now I also stopped over at the fabric area. And I'm always checking out what they have, you know, marked down. And in there, there was some duck canvas. And this is a nice piece. It's just short of a yard. Let me see if I can get it off of there. So you can see the print. Which I plan to make a couple of um, grocery bags with. But it's a nice, happy print. So I'll make a couple of grocery bags with that, with the canvas. Um, I tend to make, I tend to like the canvas bags for grocery bags more than fabric. Although I do make a fabric bag <laughs> as well that uh, looks sort of like a regular grocery bag that which you would get from Walmart, that type of bag, and then. As I was leaving, I had saw this panel, and I had wanted to get the panel, but at the time, I had a lot of other things and was busy, so I didn't get the panel. And that is the panel, and they had this marked down 75%, and there are two pieces there, so I did pick that up. I mean, that's a great price folks so you know did get that and then as I was walking along yes I did go get yarn but there are reasons I got yarn but not this one I picked up some scrubology in the aqua I realized I don't have this color and I make a different type of scrubby that some of the folks like to use um, when I do the craft fair in October at Christian Women and um, they love the scrubby I, and it's not a round scrubby 
It is a square scrubby, and um, it's real easy to make. I make those, and they're great for washing dishes, pots and pans. If you do any kind of scrubbing, cleaning that you need, even your car, folks. Um, so, you know, I got that color. And then I needed to get some more red. Um, I had red in I Love This Yarn, and I have red in um, Red Heart, but the colors aren't exactly matching, and I needed this to finish a project. So I picked up a skein of their red. And then when I was walking past, I saw them unloading this, and I hadn't seen this one before. And I was looking for a different type of print to make a, to knit a baby sweater with. And I saw this and I kind of fell in love with it because it's got the pinks, the grays, the black, or you might want to call it dark black, dark gray. And the color is called Surprise Stripes. But I really like that color. I like the pinks, the grays. The way they kind of blended in, spotted there. So I picked that up. And then I did also pick up some buttons for it, as well as I needed a couple of zippers for a project that I was working on. So I picked up a couple of zippers. Mainly because they're YKK zippers, all the time are 99 cent. Um, most of their buttons are 99 cent. Some of the more expensive buttons, I think, that are over 349 maybe a dollar ninety nine all the time which I don't know why they just don't mark it that way um, you know because the girls you have to remind them that they're ninety nine cent all the time alright that is it that was my little bitty haul very short as it was and now are you ready for uh, the devotional devotional comes out of promises from God's heart And we are going to read some promises from God's heart when you are confused. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. That comes from Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, the New International Version. And then, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. So yeah, that is it for today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the new year and adding in some new different things. Um, so I hope you'll join me. And as always, I hope that you will like, share, and subscribe you're not subscribed, I always forget to tell you, tell folks that, and I keep hearing, that's very important. But more important than that, folks, I hope that you will join me in making a comment down below. Um, if you can't make a comment, at least give it a thumbs up. That helps with the YouTube algorithm. And I don't know, every time I finally think that I've learned the algorithm, they change it. So, I know that that will help all of uh, the people who put out videos on YouTube. If you'll start to remember to do that, that is one of my intentions this year is to remember when I watch a video, give it a thumbs up, make a comment. Even if it's a, hi, how you doing today? Or hi, thank you, anything, or great video. And that cat's fixing to knock this light into the camera. She is, she's going at it. Um, she got a little toy this year and she loves it. She carries it around with her and plays with it all the time. And she is going to town with it. So I hope she doesn't knock the camera over before I get finished. All right, that is it. So remember, give a comment like video, 
whatever. If you're not subscribed and you like the people's content, make sure that you subscribe. That way you'll get notifications when they do put a video up. And I will see you again in a couple of days. Bye.